Mario Cristobal said something on Saturday about all the coaching changes and the hires that he had to make that I really appreciated. He told us, quote, whenever you make moves, it's always an opportunity to upgrade. I think he sees that opportunity, and we're already seeing signs of that, especially on offense. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricane, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So uh, still have more impressions and reactions from spring practice number one on Saturday. And spring practice number two is coming up on Tuesday. I cannot wait to go out to that. But, you know, Cristobal talked extensively about his coaching changes. And guys, keep in mind, coaching turnover. I know Miami had what felt like an unusually large amount of coaching turnover in this past cycle. I was shocked by it. But this sort of stuff does happen. I mean, look at what's been happening. Uh, Billy Napier's staff in Florida, a lot of turnover there. Nick Saban's staff at Alabama has a ton of turnover every single year. Uh, so I like the way Mario Cristobal framed it that, hey, listen, anytime coaches leave, whether they're leaving for their own opportunity, they want to better their financial situation or they just want a different spot. Or in the case of somebody like Josh Gaddis, who he did fire and replace, you look at that as an opportunity to go out and upgrade. OK, uh, and Cristobal described essentially having a depth chart of coaching targets that he went after for the vacant positions. And he said, we hit on our top targets. Now, uh, the guy that I really want to focus on, uh, because Mario Cristobal, he acknowledged that he had a lot of the same frustrations with Miami's offense last year that all of us did. Okay. The passing game was not vertical. It was horizontal or non-existent at best, but there was nothing vertical about the passing game last year. And big plays were not being created at any phase in the passing game, running game. Miami was picking up three, four yards at a time, way too many punts, you know, way too much just ineffectiveness. Uh, so Cristobal has acknowledged that. And he talked about Shannon Dawson, the new offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. He said, this guy has created some explosive offenses over the years. He can combine great passing offenses with running offenses. Mario says he's coached against him before and says that Dawson's offenses come at you uh, differently and they come at you with a lot of physicality. So Cristobal, I thought it was interesting that he pointed out that, and this is why I think he liked Shannon Dawson so much because he doesn't fall into that sort of air raid stereotype where it's just all throwing the football, no running game that, you know, over the years in different spots that Dawson has coached, when he's been offensive coordinator at places like Houston and West Virginia, he's always adapted to the strength of the personnel, right? Some years, the rushing attack is really going to be what kills you. Other years, it's going to be more pass heavy based on the personnel. And you look at some of the quarterbacks that Dawson has worked with over the years, like Geno Smith, who he, you know, mentored, uh, was his quarterback's coach and wide receiver, at, at quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator, I should say, at West Virginia years ago, uh, that you can maximize a dual threat capability of a quarterback like that and the quarterback last year at Houston as well. So Shannon Dawson can adapt to that personnel and find multiple ways to create explosive plays. And then something that really stood out to me that Mario said about Dawson, and it's worth noting here is, how collaborative he is, right? That he is going to really do a good job working together with whether it be Mirabal, the offensive line coach, Coach Beard, the wide receivers coach, Tim Harris coaching the running backs, Stephen Field coaching the tight ends. He's going to be able to collaborate with these coaches to help them maximize their own personnel to build explosive plays at every level, right? You want explosive plays from your tight ends, your wide receivers, your running backs, and then the offensive line has to clear the runway for any of that stuff to happen. So listen, only time will tell. Only time will tell if Shannon Dawson is as collaborative and as successful in doing that as Mario Cristobal thinks he's going to be. But I think we're already off to a nice start that Cristobal acknowledges that because, listen, we heard enough stories 
about the previous offensive coordinator not collaborating well with the rest of the staff. So hopefully it's true that this one does. Uh, Cristobal talked about Coach Harris, Tim Harris Jr., elite coach and human being, great developer of talent. And Mario went out of his way to say that Harris Jr., like he gets this job based on his own accomplishments, not because his father, Ice Harris, Tim Sr., was a legend, that that's not why they hired Tim Harris Jr. They hired Tim Harris Jr. because he's proven he's got his own track record. And yeah, you look at even what Harris did last year as you know an assistant head coach uh, and running backs coach at UCF, that unit at UCF, Averaged 228 yards per game on the ground, and he's a proven developer of running back talent. So I think that's a fantastic hire as well. You know, Cristobal also talked about Jason Taylor, who was, of course, on the staff last year, but he's been promoted. He's now a defensive line coach, and Jason Taylor was someone that Cristobal made it abundantly clear, was so impressed with the work that he did as an analyst last year, needed to make sure to retain this guy and lock him up because we told you um, – Taylor did have some interest from the NFL, including interest from the Miami Dolphins, but he decides to stay at the University of Miami, and I think he's got a lot of work still yet to do here with these young defensive ends, so I'm really happy about that. Cristobal talked about Kevin Beard, uh, and you know Mario has a unique perspective on KB because you know Cristobal goes back to Beard's days as a player. Mario was on the Miami staff in the early 2000s when Kevin Beard was catching passes in Miami. And, you know, he talked about back then, 20 years ago, that Beard was like a coach on the field. He would get guys together for extra practice time, extra workouts, would keep guys in check, classrooms and study halls as well. And that's only intensified, I think, over the last couple of decades that KB is even more enthusiastic about that stuff. That's why he has such a passion for coaching. And yes, I was very closely watching Kevin Beard at Saturday's opening spring practice because I was situated right in the corner where I could see just a few feet away from the wide receivers, the running backs and the quarterbacks and Kevin Beard very fired up on the field. He goes through a lot of the drills that his players are doing. He goes through those drills himself. He works up a sweat out there. Uh, I love watching him work. You know, he, Seems in pretty good shape. Like he could probably put on some pads and a helmet and, and do some things out there, KB. And Coach Cristobal also had really nice things to say about Derek Nicholson, the new linebackers coach. He called his, uh, he referred to his energy, detail, coaching acumen, and said he checks off all the boxes. And another, Wes Besaint, the linebacker who spoke to us after practice on Saturday, he also talked about Nicholson and he referred to the new linebackers coach as a hype man. Like, this guy's going to get you fired up before practice, during practice. So I think that's the type of enthusiasm this coaching staff needs. But I want to focus on something on the offensive side of the ball, friends, because I, I brought that up in the opening that I think Mario, uh, he has hopefully seized the opportunity to make upgrades to the staff with so many coaches leaving or whether they cho chose to leave or, or getting fired, that all these openings, he has seized the opportunity to upgrade this coaching staff. And I, I think that that really starts on the offensive side of the football. The word of the day is explosive. When you're talking about explosive plays, which Miami did not produce nearly enough of a season ago, I think that the way this offense is supposed to run and is going to run it's already playing dividends with the wide receivers. So Cristobal spoke after practice on Saturday, and he was asked, like, what, what really sticks out on the roster? And, like, which units do you look at and were impressed with after the first day of practice? And Coach Cristobal said he's really impressed with Miami's wide receivers. He said, quote, the biggest uptick in energy levels and enthusiasm has been the wide receivers schematically we've adapted we've changed we've done some things to help us create explosive plays they see opportunity and they've been diligent and proactive to their approach and coach beard when i was watching him he kept talking about going vertical right he wants these guys to go vertical and they're loving it right because being a wide receiver at the university of miami last year wasn't a whole lot of fun right now some of that was on these guys for dropping too many passes, but then at the same time, the quarterback situation was a carousel because Van Dyke wasn't healthy for much of the year. 
uh, and Jake Garcia was inconsistent. Jakari Brown had freshman growing pains when he played, uh, and the offensive line couldn't block anybody, so there wasn't a whole lot of time for the quarterbacks to go vertical. So that was not a very fun offense last year for these wide receivers. They're already chomping at the bit to create more big explosive plays and go vertical this year. And then, guys, the other effect that that's going to have, right, when you talk about going vertical, creating more X plays, if you actually see that on the field this year, because you got to see it on actual game days, right? What happens in spring practice only takes you so far. But if Miami can show that the offense is evolving, um, you're going to become more attractive for the next generation of hopeful Canes, right? The five and four stars, Jeremiah Smith, JoJo Trader, Chance Robinson. You've got to show these guys that Miami is a fun, productive offense to play in. If you can build that, they will come, okay? So... Uh, I love the fact that with Mario talking about changing and evolving the offensive approach and creating more explosive plays, it shows you he had the same frustrations we had from last year. And it also shows you not only do you need to score more points to win more games, <laughs> but to speak Mario's language, because he is fluent in the language of recruiting, that is his, uh, that's his native language. It's the language of recruiting. If you want to be able to land these blue chippers, these blue chip wide receivers, pass catching tight ends, you've got to show them we're going to go vertical, we're going to be explosive, and we're going to score more points, okay? Now, on the other side, we got some tremendous questions from you guys. We're going to open up the mailbag. You can tweet us at Locked on Canes, and if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. So we've got some questions about the coaching staff, uh, including a certain analyst. Was he present at practice or was he not? And what about Junior Day? Huge recruiting weekend. We will get to that and more next year on Locked on Canes. Oh, guys, I hope you have found Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try a Built Bar. Just got through the holidays. My goal has always been to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me where you want to eat healthier but you don't want to compromise taste, I've got just the thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously. They're so delicious. You won't think that they're good for you, but they're so good for you guys. What makes Built Bars so good tasting? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. They come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. And I'm not sure how Built does it, guys, because they're not only tasty, they're good for you. These bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. Only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And you don't need to wait around anymore to get a box. You can still order them online at built.com with our promo code locked on 15 for 15% off. You can still do that, but now you can also grab a box of built bars at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart or Sam's Club today. You can pick up a four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or you can grab a 13 bar box of hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. And then you can thank me later because I love me some Built Bars. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Make sure you check out the brand new podcast on this network, Locked on College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, we will talk on this episode of Locked on Canes about the Hoops team. ACC, ACC, ACC regular season champs and the number one seed in the ACC tournament. Oh, we will get into that, my friends. Let's go into the mailbag, guys. You can tweet us at Locked on Canes. And if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Get a question from Mick Gibby. Are you related to the McRib? He asks, hey, any news on DeMarcus Van Dyke staying or leaving? I have seen him in pictures at practice. Just curious. Thanks. I think DeMarcus Van Dyke is staying. Um, you know, he's this is me speaking for him, which I probably shouldn't do. But you know, he's probably disappointed that he's not gotten his promotion from defensive analyst to on field. Uh, I wouldn't blame him for being disappointed in that, but. No, I don't think Coach DVD is going anywhere, at least not yet. Um, and hopefully, if he keeps working and grinding, and this man loves the U. DeMarcus Van Dyke loves the University of Miami. That promotion for him is going to come when it's available, because it wasn't available. Uh, Coach Adai, Jamil Adai, is still 
the defensive backs coach. There was not another spot on the field. Like for Jason Taylor, it made sense. The defensive ends coach left, so they promoted Jason Taylor. Uh, the defensive backs coach has not left, so that spot is not open right now for Coach DVD. But yeah, he was at practice. I didn't see him at first uh, because I was really far away from like that part of the field where he probably was, but yeah, I was told by a couple of the other media members who were out there that they did see Demarcus Van Dyke and the uh, the tweeter said he saw pictures of DVD. So he was there. And listen, I, I think I think he's gonna he's gonna stick around, which is awesome. Because first of all, we love Demarcus. And second of all, he's valuable. Uh, he's valuable. Uh, his insight in football and his ability to recruit are very, very valuable. So hopefully this all has a very positive resolution, and eventually he gets that promotion that a lot of us feel that he deserves, okay? Here's something on the recruiting front from Kane Swag. And Kane Swag, I'm sorry you got this impression. Are you sure you're a Kane fan? Are you like, is your normal Twitter name Gator Swag? And you changed it to try and throw me off. But he tweets to us, was junior day that bad? I didn't see anything, no feedback. How do we catch up in recruiting? Um, honestly, it sounds to me like junior day went really well. I don't, I don't know where you got the impression that, Junior day went badly. Uh, is that it might be because you come to me for recruiting coverage and I appreciate that. And on Saturday's episode, we did a full uh, recap of the first spring practice. And I didn't really talk about junior day uh, because there's only one of me. OK, and with that stuff going on during spring practice, I wasn't really there to cover the recruiting stuff. I was there to cover spring practice. But I'll tell you what I did see. I saw Several dozen, if not more than 100, 2024 and 2025 prospects with their families crowding the sidelines, watching practice, walking around campus. They had a food truck event right outside the athletic center. And I know that the, the visiting players, they had other activities with Miami's coaches that the media couldn't cover. So they, they had like a whole routine planned that day and there were there were a ton of players there okay uh so it, it looked like everything was going well and from a handful of Miami's top targets we did get really good feedback from junior day so I'm I'm sorry that I didn't talk about it on Saturday that's my that's my bad uh but four-star offensive tackle Brandon Baker from out in California modern day I did see him because he's hard to miss uh, and, you know, he told the media he loved his visit and he loves the O-line coaching from Mirabal and Cristobal. Uh, every time an offensive line visits Miami, and it's probably one of the reasons why Miami has had so much success recruiting in that position group, uh, is that they these guys love because this is not a common thing around America for the head coach to be an offensive lineman and to do so much hands-on work with that position group. They love that. And Alex Mirabal, the offensive line coach also has a tremendous reputation. So, you know, Brandon Baker, he's a big time recruit, but Miami is very, very much in the mix for him. Uh, he had a high school teammate with him, Aiden Breland from out in California, who's an excellent defensive lineman, four-star defensive tackle, 6'5", 290. He loved his visit. He tweeted a lot about it. He's very active on social media. He said, had a great unofficial visit at Miami this weekend, had a blast out there, and had an amazing time conversing with coaches Cristobal, Salavea, and Jason Taylor. And then he wrote a huge thank you to Kane's football there. And boy, um, you know, we talked a little bit about Mario's enthusiasm for Jason Taylor now being a full-fledged member of the staff. You know, I don't know, like, how because he's not done it that much like how great of a recruiter jason taylor truly is but i'll tell you his name carries gravitas like this dude like he and and i think jason's a great recruiter why not he's a really personable guy and he he loves working with young players so he's probably an effective recruiter but that pro football hall of fame resume and you know he played recently enough that a lot of these high schoolers did grow up watching him play, and he resonates with these guys. Uh, he's so valuable to have on the staff for that reason. Uh, King Joseph Edwards, I think he's a is he a four? I think he's a four star, borderline five star uh, athlete out of the state of Georgia. He can play either pass rusher or tight end. He's leaning towards defense. He also raved about Jason Taylor. He said he spoke to JT and he loved their conversation. So. Yeah, there was, and that, that's only a handful of the guys who visited. There were a ton more, but really good feedback 
from junior day. I'm, I'm sorry you thought it didn't go well because I, I think it went fine, right? I mean, maybe maybe because we haven't had any verbal commits directly come out of that. Just We'll give this a little time to breathe, okay? Now, someone who was not at junior day but will visit soon, I believe, uh, is Jeremiah Smith. Five-star wide receiver out of Chaminade. He's a verbal commit to Ohio State, so Miami would need to flip him. He has said really nice things about Kevin Beard and Shannon Dawson. Uh, he gave these quotes to my colleague Brian Smith at All Hurricanes, so great job by Brian for grabbing this. Uh, talking about Beard, he said he keeps it real with you. It's the same thing. He keeps it real on all types of stuff, the love of football and stuff like that. Um, he said uh, also about coach Dawson, coach Shannon Dawson and I have spoken a little bit. He really just wants me to give them a chance. He said, and to check them out. He coached my cousin, Geno Smith, who we of course know at West Virginia. I could see myself in that offense for sure. He said, so listen, I've no pressure, KB, no pressure, coach beard, but if you can flip Jeremiah Smith, that's a guy Miami needs, right? That that's like a must get. I'm sorry that the previous coaches put you so far behind in his recruitment, but we got some ground to catch up on if we can get this guy in. We got more of your questions to answer after this. Uh, people want to know about breakout wide receivers. Uh, my impressions on Emery Williams, which, spoiler alert, are really, really, really good, and about the assistant coaches. So keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Available free wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, and we're available free on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Question from Lefty Liam. Who's your choice to be the breakout wide receiver this season? So if I'm going to say breakout, it means somebody who like hasn't broken out already, okay? Isaiah Horton. I think uh, I thought he looked really good. And again, folks do not overreact to one spring practice, especially since the media, we can only watch drills, right? We got to look at guys running routes, catch some passes. We were not watching any 11 on 11s. These were not scrimmage situations. We were watching drills. So you take it with a grain of salt, but I thought Isaiah Horton looked pretty good at practice. That's six foot four uh, heading into his second year, redshirt freshman year at Miami. And knowing that Kevin Beard, I think, is the type of coach you can really get the best out of him. I think Isaiah Horton, to me, that would be my pick as breakout wide receiver. You know, I guess if uh, like Jacoby George kind of broke out his true freshman year a couple years ago, but, you know, hasn't like put up consistent real numbers. And last year he was hurt and had all – all sorts of issues was suspended. So he could be a candidate as well. But Isaiah Horton, to me, Liam, is someone to really watch. I could see him end up breaking out this year. Uh, we get a question from Maine Kane, who says uh, two questions. Number one, how did the receivers look? He said he heard something about Isaiah Horton having an impressive first day. I confirmed that just now. He said, what was the overall feeling and mood? Uh, last season, the team felt heavy and unhappy. Curious if it seemed lighter with a bit more energy. It did. Um, first practice, though. The first practice, it's like the first day of school, right? Everything's going to be great. Like, I'm I'm more concerned with, because you're right, the energy level was awesome. Coach Cristobal was smiling. Tyler Van Dyke was really charged up. He basically said, like, this is going to be the year, he said. So Tyler was very happy. All the players seemed very happy. You know, the first day, shiny, new, the adrenaline is flowing, you know, I think we're going to have a better idea when we get through practice two, three, and four, what the mood is really like. Uh, I will tell you that an impression that I had and everyone else that was out there confirms this. So this wasn't just me, right? I, I wasn't the only one who felt this way. I thought the entire team looked, they looked bigger and stronger than they did at this time last year. So I think that's a testament to the strength and conditioning program. And even some of the true freshmen, I thought uh, they must have, because, you know, they, they've had, couple months now on campus hitting the weight program. So it seems like they're really benefiting from that. So yeah, the enthusiasm, the pos positivity was all there, but it was only day one. So we'll see if we can maintain that. But I did think the team looked bigger and stronger, which is a real important thing. As far as the receivers, you know, I talked about Isaiah Horton. Uh, I also, I was really watching the young pups really closely uh, you know, Ray, Ray, Joseph, he was wearing like a, a red limited Jersey, but for the drills we got to watch, he didn't look limited in any of that. Like he, 
He was running around catching passes nicely. He looks like he's in great shape. And then Robbie Washington, I was really impressed with that. I thought Robbie looks really strong and really built. So I, I got a good look at the true freshman. And you know, Xavier Restrepo, I also got a good look at him. You know, he just looks like he picked up where he left off before all the injury issues and stuff. Like he, he and Van Dyke, they've got that chemistry going again. They were throwing and catching with each other. And I thought Restrepo looked pretty good. Uh, let's get this question from Al. Al asks, uh, I, I think I already answered this on Ray Ray, but he says, Alex, first impressions on Ray Ray and Emery Williams, buy or sell? So obviously Ray Ray, I'm buying. Ray Ray Joseph. Emery Williams, I'm not buying. I am stocking up. Like <laughs> I, I am stashing. I'm, I'm buying Emery. And, you know, we're probably not going to see him actually play for a year or two. Uh, you know, maybe some mop-up duty in like some of those first couple of games. Um, that was the first thing that stood out to me. I walked out to Green Tree on Saturday and I see number 17 with these tree trunk muscular legs. Uh, and he's taller than I, I just got to be around six, five Emory Williams. Um, you know, I hadn't looked at my roster yet and I'm like, what tight end is that wearing number 17? Oh my God. That's an 18 year old incoming freshman quarterback. Emory Williams looked really good. And it wasn't just, you know, the size of his legs, uh, his, he was spitting it. His arm looked on point as well. So I'm definitely buying stock in Emory Williams. And I asked Chris ball about him and I asked Tyler Van Dyke about him and they were both raving about him as well. Get a question from Sane Kane. He says, who are the starting linebackers? It seems like the young blood coming in. Some of the guys could start, but you know, uh, but Wesley is going to be right there. Uh, I absolutely, Wes Besaint, you know, he's, he's still young, right? I mean, he's heading into his second year. I think he's going to be a starter. Um, I could see Francisco Maui Goa, who's a, a veteran transfer from Washington State. I could see him starting. Uh, now, Corey Flagg, we're not going to be able to watch Flagg in spring because he's uh, he may, maybe at some point. So I can't remember exactly what Mario said, but he, he isn't participating yet in spring coming off injury. Uh, but, you know, Flagg is always going to be right there competing. And I really like what I what I see and hear about Malik Bryant, uh, especially in the linebacker core, Raul Aguirre. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's I, I don't think any of the true freshmen are necessarily going to be starters, but I think that they can absolutely add depth and competition to that position group. Sane Kane. Uh, Kane Swag asks me, how are the new assistant coaches gelling? Um it was too soon to say. Um, I don't know. I don't know for sure how they're gelling, but um, I do know that a lot of the new assistants, especially when you look at guys like Kevin Beard and Tim Harris Jr., who were both alums, they freaking love Miami and they they already know Mario really, really well. Um, you know, guys like Shannon Dawson and Lance Gidry came from outside the program, so they're probably still kind of getting to know everybody. But Cristobal did go out of his way to say that uh, that Dawson is a good collaborator. Hopefully Gidry is as well. I mean, Gidry, I saw him out there running around with the safeties and working with them, so too soon to say, but I ho hopefully they collaborate well. Um, okay, I have time for one more, and then there are going to be some we answer late in the week. Anton asks, if you have a choice – would you take Rhett Lashley's offense or the new offense? Which one do you think, which one do you bet on to be better and why? Okay, well, honestly, I don't think it's as much about the coaches as it is about the personnel here. Because I, I liked Rhett Lashley a lot. And, you know, Shannon Dawson has not proven anything yet in Miami. But I, I like his philosophy a lot. But if this year's offensive line ends up being as good as I think it is, I would bet on this offense being better than Lashley's offense. And I say this offense being like not just this coming year, the next couple of years, because the big fellows up front can make a huge difference. Uh, and, you know, Tyler Van Dyke, he was in Lashley's offense as a freshman. Now he gets to be in uh, Dawson's offense as a junior. So hopefully the experience is a good factor there. And as much as I loved Rhett Lashley, the running game wasn't very good under Lashley. So I think Miami could bridge that gap with a better offensive line and a stronger stable of running backs. So um, the personnel has a lot to do with it. Now, Lashley had the advantage of having Charleston Rambo and Mike Harley at receiver. We don't have proven guys like that at, at outside receiver. So you need people like Jacoby George and Colby Young and Isaiah Horton and Frank Ladson, guys like that, Michael Redding to really step up. I hope they step up, okay? So, all right, we, we, we got a couple more we'll get to later on in the week, but thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen We'll be back later this week, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team 
every day.